I do not play many racing games, but when I do, I prefer them to be arcadey and entertaining with that feel. I prefer action movie levels of entertainment with my racers. I want to experience the fantasy of participating in a high-speed pursuit like I would see in some of my favorite action films. Realistic sim racers are not usually my cup of tea. Now I understand that it has its fans, and I'm not discounting that subgenre of racing just because it isn't for me. But being able to race really fast with explosives flying everywhere as I'm trying to get into first place and then take out every car I see, now that's something that I can't experience in real life. So with that, I tend to get interested in racing games that go for that arcadey fantasy nature. Burnout Revenge gave me my first taste of playing a racing game where it was more in line with what I wanted. It was fast and visceral and man does it deserve a remake and a true sequel. This year we had the guys that made the fun Motorstorm series create a new racer that hoped to capture the arcade market with Onrush. While I enjoyed Onrush for its sense of speed and unique team-based modes, there's always room for more healthy competition. And this brings us to Grip, a new combat racer that attempts to take elements from arcade racers and kart racers to form a fun experience. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you my review for Grip. Grip is a new combat racer that gives you some fun firepower to go with all that speed. Grip shares a few elements you would expect to see with kart racers like pickups, speed booths, and more. While within the normal races, you will find the need to focus on your speed and your opponents. Your speed can be increased by hitting speed boosts along with grabbing items that will net you with a manual speed boost. You get a decent variety of weapons to use like machine guns, missiles, and a shield. You can really feel that sense of speed as you consistently hit boosts, and at the same time you can feel yourself come to a crawl when you're not hitting them. A neat aspect of grip is how you can flip or drive on the side of walls as you're in a race. Being able to drive on different surfaces gives this game something else to enjoy while you're racing. In many cases, you'll see other opportunities that you can take advantage of with more speed boots and pickups on the side of walls or even on the ceiling. Being in a race where everyone could be driving on a different surface within the same race and area could be really cool and I think all of this really adds to the spectacle. Swapping between those surfaces adds to the level of intensity with the races. So while you're driving, look for those opportunities to take advantage of them because it's just plain fun. With driving on different surfaces, this will lead to some fun jumps within the races and you can control and angle your car to help pull off some flips or resituate yourself within the air. Even landing on the side of your wheels won't stop you within a race. Realism is thrown out the door for fun in this game. The driving itself immediately feels good. While that should be expected and a given with these types of games, to have a good feeling racer is really important. Controls that don't feel right to the player are apparent right away and you'll notice here how good the controls are. The nature of driving comes natural to you. 
The act of assessing your environment is a bit different in how you're able to drive on different surfaces within this game. So that in and of itself is going to take a little getting used to just to be able to properly assess the tracks. Grip encourages you to drive on its walls and not take the traditional path. And when you indulge in these sequences, it's really satisfying. Like in most kart games, the pickups you grab can really help you climb yourself to the top of that race. The missiles are really awesome to shoot off as you watch them home in on their target, but I found them to be even more satisfying during the night levels. It was the combination of the night atmosphere mixed with the lighting of the rocket speeding towards its target. So the gameplay feels good, but I also need to mention the amount of modes available to the player within this game. The amount of options available makes this title feel like it's from two generations ago. So you have the campaign to play, and this features a series of tournaments that you can go through with different race types. The race types can be played individually within the additional single player options. Some of the best modes are the classic and ultimate race modes, along with deathmatch and elimination. The two race modes act like you think they would, with one focusing more on combat than the other. Deathmatch really brings me back to the days of playing those battle kart modes in many of those popular kart games. Focusing on picking up weapons and blasting away enemies is great within this mode. All these single player modes can be played with offline bots, which is most appreciated along with all the other options you have. Elimination can be really intense as you race to not be the last person within the race to help yourself from being blown up. While playing within these modes, you are continually working towards leveling up your profile. What I really liked about how the experience is earned is that even though you may not be first within a race, you'll still earn experience points. I am not very good at these types of games and I was still earning experience for damaging enemies and completing races, which I like since this means that the game is continually rewarding you for your time. As you level up, you'll earn new vehicles to race, each of them have their own stats, along with being able to customize the colors of your vehicles, decals, and different tires. This all helps to bring some personality to the vehicles that you bring into the game. The game can be played online, which is a welcome addition. I do need to comment that I could not access the multiplayer as I tried several times before the launch of the game to enter into an online game, but I was not able to connect with anyone. So know that with this review, I'm not going to be assessing the multiplayer. Before we get into some of the flaws, I am happy that this game does offer split screen as an option. The combat racing fits perfectly with a party setting and this has a very good pick up and play nature to it. One thing to note is that depending on the size of your TV, it may be hard to assess the environments in 4 player split screen since your vision is reduced. This really comes into play with a handful of the harder maps. Regardless, I am happy that split screen is included, especially when it's been being removed from so many games. There are a few flaws that I would like to mention as well. The game does have a function that pops you back onto the track if you fall off the track, but this isn't always the case. There were a good handful of times when I was racing and I would make a wrong turn and get stuck on the environment and would have to try and be able to finagle my way out of it to be able to resituate myself to get back into the race, where I feel like this would have been a great opportunity to just hit a button, reset yourself, get you back on the track, and get yourself right back into the action. Getting stuck is frustrating, but having the game drop you back on the track is what keeps you going. Getting stuck can really hurt the motivation of the game. I did have to restart a few races because of this. Thankfully, I do think this could be fixed with a future patch. I do think there's a missed opportunity with the combat within this game. I strongly feel like some sort of takedown mechanic to at the very least be able to take out a vehicle or damage them by just hitting them with your vehicle would have been really satisfying. As I was playing Grip, it seemed like the only way I could substantially damage anyone else was with weapon pickups. I think hitting someone with your vehicle and doing some damage or even taking them out would definitely fit within the realm of this combat racer. Grip labels itself as a combat racer, so the rage and crazy nature of hitting someone just feels at home here. To further elaborate on this, I wish there was more damage to other vehicles, like pieces of a vehicle flying off, or some of it just hanging off because of damage. There are explosions which is cool, but adding kind of this extra flair to it would really make these races feel that much more dangerous.
Grip is a fun arcade racer, and I was impressed with the level of options that this game provided. With many games gearing themselves towards exclusively for online play, Grip feels like a product of the past with its features, and it plays like a new game. Grip offers plenty of content for offline single player play with the campaign and the single player races, and those single player races come with their own customizable options for you to tweak to your own preferences. The variety of different races is solid, along with the game adding more after its release for free. The addition of split screen is something I personally like, and I'm happy that it was included here. There's a chance that Grip might get lost among all the other big hits this year, just like many other underrated games that I covered before. So, if you really like these types of games, I would highly suggest you don't let this one pass you by.